Come on inside and let me show you all of the plants that survive the winter here in Nashville, Tennessee and the beautiful kitchen garden here at Juniper Green. So this is our tunnel arch trellis. This is growing blackberry and raspberry vines. You can see they've all gone dormant for the winter, uh, but they are ready to put on some new canes. Hopefully those are gonna start coming up out of the ground soon. We also have uh, some, what's the word, um, trumpet vine on these as well, and some coral honeysuckles. So those should start to come back as soon as we hit, I don't know, a month from now, hopefully. Uh, they cut back the grasses, which look wonderful. Look at this sweet little bird nest. I guess this means there's been some birds hanging out in this garden uh, last year. Hopefully they'll come back. And uh, hopefully we have some echinacea that's gonna come back up in between these grasses. All right, so now come and see the huge surprise of what's happened in our production gardens. We're gonna start over here on this side and I'll show you all that made it through our really cold winter here. So this is astounding, amazing to me. We had snow, ice, even last night the temps were in the 20s. And look at these plants. You can see the Swiss chard has really, you know, has a little bit of frostbite on it, but it's totally fine. This parsley is bouncing back. We've got some arugula that's bolted, but that's understandable. This oregano is already coming back. The chives are already ready for a harvest. Uh, the lavender, what in the world is happening with this lavender? It's still alive and thriving. Uh, this arugula will be taken out. It has uh, gone to seed, bolted. We can actually use these. You can eat these blooms. You can still eat the greens. Next time I'll just cut these right at the root rather than pulling it all the way up. But you've got a little bit of lettuce. You've got some spinach in here. You've even got this. Um, this is probably like a, a ruffled lettuce. I mean, it's just amazing to see what has survived our very cold winter. You've got all these pansies still alive and uh, parsley over here, Swiss chard. These, this bed over here is similar, but there's a plant here that's doing great too. And this is the sorrel or sorrel or however you want to say. Um, but look at this beautiful veined sorrel. I just love the red color on these leaves. And man, this plant can make it through some cold weather. Again, we've got bolted arugula, but my goodness, I mean, the smell of fresh lavender in the start of spring is just amazing. Uh, we've got some, I think this is corn salad that still made it through the cold weather. And now let's go and check back. We've got our fruiting beds here at the back of the kitchen garden. So let me show you what survived there because it's amazing. All right, we've got our six fruiting beds here on the edge of the property. And I still can't believe everything that looks so good. Um, so all these pansies made it through the winter. They've been in this garden since October, you guys. October, November, December, January, February. Like six months. I don't know why we use pansy as a derogatory term, okay? Let's just end that right now. Pansy stands for strong and mighty and can make it through anything. Um, these bok choys have started to flower. You can actually eat the flowers. It's got like this nice little mustardy flavor but these will come out today so we can add new fresh plants but they still look great the toscano kale has hung on um, and we got chives here in the middle there's just so many things that are still thriving in these beds it is crazy so come on down here and we'll see i think most of them here's a cabbage obviously ready to come out the bok choy that's flowering looks like the peas didn't really take off here in the back of the bed we may have, uh, looks like a tiny carrot. <laughs> um, this one probably came up from seed and then just got stuck somewhere in, in uh, the middle of winter. But still, you know, you could have a little, little bite or two from this one. And, uh, and then just more of the same. So more of bok choy, more cabbage and loads of flowers that have made it through the winter time. So, um, you know, we're in a climate here in Nashville. I call it a mild climate. We have a true winter, a true summer, and so many people quit gardening or pull everything out of the garden at the start of winter. And I hope that this walkthrough shows you and inspires you that if you live in a place that 
you know, doesn't sit under snow for months on end, but still gets snow, still gets ice and cold. Uh, there are still so many plants that can push through that kind of weather and thrive in the garden um, all through the coldest months of the year. So today we're here, we're gonna be replanting for the spring season. We're moving into the cool season. We're in the cool season now cool season means there's a threat of frost each and every day uh, but the temps are rising they're gonna be averaging between 45 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit so um, so we're bumping up out of freezing temperatures every day but there's always a chance we're gonna dip back below freezing at night so that's what we call cool season here at Gardenary generally you get two of those a year so we're in ours right now in Nashville and then we'll go back to cool season in the fall so today we've got loads of plants to put in, lettuces, cabbages, kales, um, loads of herbs and flowers, lots of seeding to do for root crops like radishes and carrots and beets. So we're gonna get busy, follow along as we plant, um, but first it's, it's really fun to just walk through and savor and enjoy uh, and appreciate the magic of nature that keeps growing even when we're all cuddled inside, freezing to death. Uh, the garden doesn't die, it's pretty awesome.
We just had a lot of fun planting in the garden. I can't wait to show you all the things that we did. Let's start with these back beds. So we took out all the spent cabbages and bok choys, everything that was flowering and the kales. And then we added in a ton of new plants. So our big ones that we did were peas to grow right alongside the Nicole panel trellis. So everywhere you see a vertical line, that's where we put a pea seed and it's going to turn into a pea plant, which is going to turn into more peas and more pea seeds. And then we put rows of my favorite kind of kale, the uh, scotch curl kale. Then we did Napa cabbages. We've got carrot seeds right here. We've got red lettuces and then radish seeds right along the side of the bed. All six of these beds are growing those exact same things so that the restaurant, the event space, uh, the caterers, they can get loads of harvest and produce from the gardens that we planted. Now let me show you these front four beds. So these beds we're gonna use to produce mostly greens for salads for juniper green. So here, right down the middle, we planted loads of Swiss chard, which is a huge producer for lots of harvest. Some beautiful, all kinds of dishes can be made with Swiss chard. Then we did rows of romaine, and then we planted a ton of beet seeds. You need lots of beet seeds because you only get one beet per seed. So we planted all four of these beds the same way. Lots of beets, lots of romaine, lots of Swiss chard. Now it's really fun to see all of the perennial gardens coming back. Let me show you what we uncovered. So we pulled up all this brown right here to start to uncover the growth of our perennial garden. This is all surrounding the kitchen garden space. So in just about a month, all of this brown is gonna turn to lots of color, lots of flowers, and lots of growth. So it only took a couple hours, pulled out the old plants, refreshed the soil a little bit, added lots of plants, seeds, and uh, now we are ready for the spring season. So stay tuned to see how things grow in over the next few weeks. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.